let me show you how you can use ChatGPT correctly to be more productive. It's all about how you ask it things. It's prompt engineering, and it's also using a new ChatGPT feature called Memories that is an absolute game changer. I'm gonna start with some simple examples and then go to more advanced examples. So ChatGPT can do basic stuff, right? For example, it can translate things. I'm in Bali right now. Let's say that I'm at a restaurant and I want to give my compliments to the chef in Indonesian. How do I give my compliments to the chef in Indonesian? Let's see what ChatGPT has to say. I will not attempt to pronounce this, but ChatGPT handily tells me what I need to say and also how, what it actually means. But I can say, how do I pronounce that? Now, ChatGPT knows that I speak English, and so it's going to do the phonetic version of the Indonesian in English. This is pretty cool, right? ChatGPT is actually much better at translating pretty much anything already than Google Translate is. So definitely give that a try if you haven't already. But this is just a very basic ChatGPT use case. What is something more interesting that we can do with ChatGPT? Let's say I work as an interior designer and I want to write a proposal to redesign someone's living room. I'm going to talk to ChatGPT like I'm talking to a human, but I'm talking to ChatGPT like I'm talking to a human who doesn't know that much about me. I'm giving context. That's prompt engineering. That's incredibly important. I'm gonna say I work in my second job, because my first job is this YouTube thing, as a freelance interior designer. Let's write a proposal to renovate someone's kitchen. Let's start here. Let's see what ChatGPT comes up with. Okay, ChatGPT came up with a long proposal and there's a lot of stuff in there. It also doesn't quite sound like me. I tend to speak more informally. So I'm gonna give it some instructions on how to improve this. But first I wanna draw your attention to a very cool new ChatGPT feature called Memories. See how it says Memory Updated at the top here? ChatGPT now remembers that I have a second job in which I am a freelance interior designer. And if I tell it things like this, it's going to remember that and know that in future conversations. That's going to be incredibly helpful and I'll show you more about that later on in the video. But first, let's give ChatGPT some instructions to refine what happened, because this is a very generic proposal for renovating someone's kitchen. Oh, I said kitchen rather than living room. Doesn't matter, we're gonna do kitchen. Okay, let's make it half the length. I also want it to sound more informal because I speak more informally, okay. This is definitely shorter and it sounds more informal with kitchen reno, for example, that maybe goes a little bit far, but that's okay. I can even say, let's call it a kitchen renovation and avoid just using the word reno. Now it's gonna improve that in the next iteration. And that's something that you really wanna do with ChatGPT, you want to iterate. If you ask it to do something for you and it comes back with something and you don't quite like it, just tell it how you want it to be different. Speak to it in the same way that you'd speak to a human, but again, a human who may need a little bit more context. Now I also see that ChatGPT included a payment plan, 30% upfront, 40% halfway, and 30% at the end. Let's say that's not how it work. Also, my payment plans are always 50% upfront and 50% at the end. What it's gonna do is it's gonna actually regenerate the proposal with those changes. It calls it a kitchen renovation rather than a kitchen reno. And over here in the payment plan, the payment plan now says 50% upfront and 50% at the end. And let's look at the top. Okay, it didn't remember this this time, but I'll say, let's also remember for the future that my payment plans are always 50% upfront and 50% at the end. Now it's gonna say memory updated. And if I click on memory updated, payment plans for projects are always 50% upfront and 50% at the end. We're gonna manage those memories later, but see how this is really neat and you can get very creative here. You can tell ChatGPT where you live. You can say, insert something showing testimonials from past clients. And then of course, you're gonna to have to supply those testimonials, right? You can go really, really far and just keep iterating and eventually you'll come up with a really nice proposal. And one of the cool things is that ChatGPT this way is going to suggest things to include in the proposal that you otherwise might not have thought of yet. Here's something cool that we can do. Let's offer the client multiple packages. Some are cheaper where I do less work and others are more expensive where I do more work. Work. Let's look at the final iteration. We're still calling this a kitchen renovation, so it remembers that from earlier in the conversation. And now we have three packages, a basic package, a standard package, and a premium package. And of course I can tell ChatGPT, let's call the basic 
package this, let's call the premium package that. Anyway, have fun with this. Now here's another example from my own life and business. I recently started to give in-person productivity workshops. I did one last night and I've already told ChatGPT what went well and what I could improve. So let's say that I start working on the next in-person productivity workshop and I want ChatGPT to remind me of what I wanted to improve next time. First, let's go over to the memories. If I click my profile icon right here, I can go to settings and then I can go to personalization. By the way, there's a custom instructions field right here where you can tell ChatGPT things about you. This is very helpful and I highly recommend doing this. I haven't done this because I have had conversations with ChatGPT where I've told it things about me and it saved those as memories so I don't need to give them custom instructions over here. In other words, you can give those custom instructions during your regular chats with ChatGPT as well. Just make sure that it says memory updated. Now, if I go here to manage the memories, what we can see, for example, is that ChatGPT knows that for the next workshop, I need to put bigger text on my slides. And I also want to tell the story of an example person, Ian, who perhaps feels really overwhelmed by all of the communication coming at him. So ChatGPT knows this from a previous conversation. Let's start a new conversation with ChatGPT and say, hey, ChatGPT, I will be hosting another in-person productivity workshop soon. Can you make me a list of to-dos for the workshop prep so that I make improvements compared with the last time I did a workshop. I should simplify my slides, eliminating small text, using larger fonts, and including more visuals and graphics. I should develop the story of this hypothetical person called Ian, and maybe creating a graphic of Ian receiving lots of emails, messages, and so on. I need to iterate on a framework that I thought of to try and explain things more easily, but I wasn't very happy with the framework, and so on. Now, this is really helpful, but I want to iterate on this. Make this a short numbered to-do list with each to-do on one line. So just tell ChatGPT what you want it to do. Let's see what happens. Very nice. Now what I can do is I can just copy this and use this button right here and paste that into my to-do app and then maybe I need to delete a few things or assign some deadlines or something. But I now have a really nice checklist to make sure that next time my workshop, I actually follow through and improve the things that I wanted to improve on compared to last time. Here's one more example, and this is the one that I'm the most excited about, and I really want you to try as well. I've told ChatGPT about my business, about my current business challenges, about the products I offer, what I sell, what my marketing channel is, and so on. I'm going to ask ChatGPT how I can spend some time next week in a really effective way to grow my business. So I'm gonna use ChatGPT as my business coach or a sparring partner. Let's see how it goes. I've previously told you about my business structure and challenges. I'd like to 10X my business revenue. What are the top three highest leverage things I can work on next week to make this happen? I'm very excited to see ChatGPT's responses here. The 10X your business revenue, focusing on high leverage activities is important, blah, blah. Here's the top three things you can do this week. Enhance and launch your new productivity framework course. Ooh, I like that. Optimize YouTube content for growth and engagement. Okay, sure. Strengthen your email marketing and lead generation. These are definitely high leverage things and I like this. This is great for brainstorming, but I'm not done. We have to have a little back and forth. I want to focus on this first one. I've been thinking about how I can give a name to the productivity framework or system that I've been teaching people for about five years now. So that is a very important thing to do because I think when you give things a catchy name, people tend to remember them and tell your friends and so on. Go tell your friends, by the way, if you enjoy my videos. And while you're at it, like, subscribe, and hit that bell icon. <laughs> Thank you. I want to spend a little bit of time fleshing this out. So I'll just tell ChatGPT, again, in the same way that I would speak to a human. Let's focus on the first of these three. Let's come up with an outline for my new productivity framework course. I don't know the name yet, so perhaps you can also suggest some names for the framework. But I definitely want to see a pretty brief outline for this new course. Note that the course shouldn't be about any specific apps or tools. It should be about the principles. First of all, ChatGPT updated its memory. I'm creating a new productivity framework course focused on principles rather than specific apps or tools. Great, ChatGPT now knows this. Here's a course outline with a pretty bland name. We're not gonna choose Mastering Your Day, the ultimate framework for personal productivity, <laughs> but I appreciate the intent. We have uh, modules, course lessons. This is pretty cool. 
And we have potential names for the framework, elevate focus flow. Okay, those are pretty boring. Those names sound pretty boring. Let's focus on the outline. Let's make the outline more playful, less serious, and let's weave a narrative in there about helping the course participants feel less overwhelmed by all of the demands that are made of them at home and at work. Let's see, this iterating is really, really important. You've just gotta go back and forth with ChatGPT for a while, that's where the real magic happens. It will remember stuff, it will learn stuff about you, and it's gonna use that to tailor its response. You're still gonna have to do some work of your own in the end, of course, but this can be a fantastic way to at least start your brainstorming. Let's see what we got now. Chaos to Calm, the fun path to mastering productivity, definitely better. We've got, uh, we're now talking about a journey ahead, a productivity playground, gathering the storm, organizing the mess. It definitely sounds more playful and fun. This is probably gonna need a lot of work, but I hope that this has given you a sense of how powerful ChatGPT can be if you're using it correctly. If you've not used ChatGPT before, or you haven't in a while, go try it out. Tell ChatGPT what you do for work. How does your job or business function? What's going well, but especially what are your challenges? Ask ChatGPT how it can help you. And when you're working on something with ChatGPT, ask what other information you can provide it to help it give you better responses, better answers. Go do that and report back in the comments how it's going for you. And also let me know if there are other things you'd like to learn about ChatGPT. Thanks so much for watching. Have a great day. I'll see you in the next video. Ciao.